this video, I want to take a look at the ovaries. These are the female gonads and they are paired structures. They are going to produce the eggs, the ova, as well as sex hormones. If you're curious about the hormones, we have an entire series of videos on the endocrine system. Please feel free to check that out. The ovaries, as far as appearance go, are around three centimeters long, two centimeters wide, and about a centimeter thick. Depending on who you read, they might give different numbers. We're talking approximations here. This is anatomy, this is the human body, so it's always by and by at large with exceptions. The ovaries, like the testes, are wrapped in the tunica albuginea, which is a supportive structure that goes around the ovaries. It encases and wraps the ovaries. Eggs within the ovaries develop in their own follicles. Think of follicles as bubbles, a bubble space where the egg will develop inside that and you have all these follicles, all these little bubbles within the ovary. The ovaries are internally divided into something called the cortex as well as medulla. Now if you've followed me on other videos like the endocrine system as well as the urinary system, you're going to discover that some of these terms are familiar like we've talked about the cortex, we've talked about medulla before. Well here are those terms once again. So how do they relate with the ovaries? The medulla of the ovaries is made mostly of loose connective tissue, blood vessels, lymphatic vessels, as well as nerve fibers, while the cortex is a compact tissues, ovarian follicles, and the place where oocytes are going to develop. When you take a look at the ovaries, they're held in place. They're, they're supported by different structures. Connective tissues are going to hold them where they should be. We have the ovarian ligament, which holds the median pole. This attaches the ovaries to the uterus. We have the suspensory ligament. This attaches to the lateral pole, attaches to the side wall of the pelvis. And then we have the broad ligament, which is just what its name describes. Very broad, it attaches the anterior margin. Also within this area, we have something called the uterine tubes. We also know these as the oviducts or fallopian tubes, so you might have heard it as one of three different ways. It is a canal that's around 10 centimeters long. This is the connection, this is the tube, this is the pathway that connects the ovaries to the uterus. So the areas of the uterine tube from the uterus to the ovaries is the isthmus, the ampulla, the infundibulum, and the fimbrae. The uterine part is the shortest part of the tube. It passes through the muscular wall of the uterus. The isthmus is a narrow portion that connects to the uterus. The ampulla is a middle and longest part of the tube, and it's the most common site of fertilization. Now, hold on a second here. When I took my embryology course, that was an excellent question that always showed up. Where does fertilization most likely occur? Well, again, the ampulla. So that's a good term to be familiar with. Then we have the infundibulum, which is found between the ampulla and the fimbrae. It opens into the peritoneal cavity. Now, this is kind of cool if you think about it. The tube is not directly fused to the ovaries. There's actually a gap. There's an opening between the fallopian tubes and the ovaries. It's not a fused structure. Okay, so the infundibulum is found between the ampule and the fimbrae. It opens into the peritoneal cavity. Then we have these little fingers. These things are called fimbrae that will sweep the ovaries looking for a released oocyte. So every month when the ovary releases an egg, these little fimbrae, these little fingers are going to kind of caress the ovaries looking for an egg so the egg can go into the uterine tubes and ultimately the uterus. Speaking of uterus, that's the topic of our next video.